Hey guys, it's Michael from Concam Street. In today's video, we'll be going over how to do Hess's Law problems. First, I'll show you the full process for how to do these type of problems. Then, I'll show you a shortcut. And then lastly, I'll show you a situation in which the shortcut fails and how we can mitigate that. Hess's Law is applicable when you have to figure out the delta H of a particular reaction and you're given the delta H's of other reactions. Delta H, in short, is just the change enthalpy, which you can just think of as either the heat that's absorbed or released in the uh, particular reaction. So for this first example, we are asked to solve for the change in enthalpy of this reaction right here, and we're given the change enthalpies of two other reactions. I have to answer, this is the final answer, and we'll show how to get to that answer if it matches up. The best approach for doing Hess's Law problems is to look at the final reaction that you want and pick a species, a reactant or a product, that appears in only one of the given reactions. For example, PCL5 would be a good start because PCL5 appears only in this reaction. It doesn't appear in the first reaction. A bad species to pick is Cl2 because you can see Cl2 appears in both the reactions. So once again, you pick a species that only appears in one of the given reactions. So we'll start with the PCL5. That appears in the second reaction. Then you're going to ask yourself two questions. And those two questions are, is it on the, cor the correct side? And do we have the correct amount? So in the end, we want one PCL5 on the react side. And there currently are four PCL PCL5 on the reactant side. So it is on the correct side because we want the react side. It's on the react side. But I don't have the correct amount. I want one, but I have four currently. So what we have to do is we have to divide the entire reaction by four. So I'll just write divide by four. And when you divide a reaction by four, then you have to divide the delta H by 4. So we'll re rewrite the, the reaction after dividing everything by 4. That'll be PCL5 gas becoming 1, 4, 1, 4, P4 solid plus 10 divided by 4 CL2 gas. And then the delta H is going to be 3,438 divided by 4. That's 859.5 and for other reaction let's see what what we can pick uh, we can pick PC PCL3 because PCL3 only appears in this first reaction so it's on the correct side we want PCL3 on the product side it currently is on the product side so it is on the correct side do we have the correct amount of it we only want one PCL3 and we currently have four PCL3 so once again we're going to divide this entire reaction by four which means we're going to divide the delta H by four so rewriting it, you will get you have one four P four solid plus six over four CO two gas becoming one PCL three because four divided by four is one, and then the delta H is going to be negative two thousand four hundred thirty nine divided by four, which will give you negative 609.75 and then what we do next is we just cancel out the species that appear on the uh, opposite side so if we have the same amount on the opposite side we, we can cancel it out so we have, there's one four p4 on the left and there's one four p4 on the right so we can cancel that out and we can also cancel out some of the c the cl2s so we have 6 over 4 right now, and then we have a 10 over 4. So we can subtract 6 over 4 from both sides, and that will leave us with just 4 over 4, because 6 minus 4 is 4. So when we bring what's left over down, and that will give us PCL5 gas becoming PCL3 gas and just CL2 gas. And that matches the, the reaction that we wanted. Then to figure out the final delta H, we just add the delta H of, of these two reactions. That would be 859.5 minus 609.75. And then that will give you 249.75. And with six figs, it becomes 249.8. So that matches up. So that's the full process where you, you write out the reaction. But if you can figure out what you can do with with each of these given reactions, then you, then you, know, you don't have to write it out. So if I'm able to figure out that I can just divide 
the first reaction by 4 and the second reaction by 4, I can just figure out the delta H values here. And then I can just add the delta H's together and that will give me the same answer without having to write out the entire reaction. All right, let's take a look at the next example. What if we have three reactions instead of two reactions? We'll still be the same approach. And once again, we're going to look at the given reaction and we're going to pick out a species that only appears in one of these, these reactions right here. Uh, maybe the first one we can focus on is N, N2H4. N2H4 only appears in this reaction. And then we ask ourselves, is this currently on the correct side? It is not. We want it on the reactive side, but it's currently on the product side. So that means I have to flip this. And do I have the correct amount of it? I want one, two, one N2H4 and I have one, two, one N2H4. So I do have the correct amount. So that means the only thing we have to do is we have to flip the reaction. And when you flip a reaction, you just change the sign of the delta H's. It currently is 22.5, so we just flip the sign and it now becomes negative 22.5. So we figured out what to do with the first reaction. Let's see what we, can, what we can do with the second or third reaction. So once again, we're going to pick a species that only appears in one of the reactions, and that could be CH4O, because CH4O only appears in that third reaction. And we're going to ask ourselves, is that on the correct side? Uh, we want on the react side, but it's on the product side, so I have to flip it. And do we have the correct amount of it? I want one, and I have one. So uh, only, I only have to flip it, so that means I'm just going to change the sign. And then lastly, from the second reaction, we can pick out N2, because N2 only appears in that second reaction. So we, we want one and two on the product side, and I already have one and two on the product side. So I don't have to do anything with this reaction. So we figured out what we what to do with each of the reactions. We can just skip writing out the reactions because we know that in the end it's going to cancel out, and then we could just add all these delta H's together. So this would be negative 22.5 plus 57.5 minus 81.2, and that gives you negative 46.2 kilojoules, which matches the answer. So if you can figure out what you what to do with each of the reactions, then you don't you can just skip out writing out writing everything out and canceling out the species. But let's take a look at one last example where the shortcut doesn't work out, where we can't figure out what to do with each of the reactions. We're gonna just assume that we can in the beginning, and we're gonna just use a sh attempt to use a shortcut. So pick a species that only appears in one of these reactions, and that's C two H two. I believe C2H2 only appears in that first reaction, yes. Then ask yourself the same question. Is it currently on the correct side? Uh, we want one on the product side, we have one on the reactant side. So um, I just have to flip this. And when you flip it, you just change the sign. So it was originally negative, now we'll make it positive. Let's take a look, let's try to find the next species, CO2 maybe? CO2 only appears in this last reaction. Is it, is it on the correct side? We want, we, we want two on the react side, we have two on the product side, that means we have to flip this up so that we just change the sign, it'll be positive. And then is there something in the second reaction that only, appear, only, that only appears in the second reaction? Uh, O2 doesn't work because O2 appears in both the second and the third reaction, and then H2O H2O doesn't work because it also appeared in the second and third reaction. So I can't figure out what to do with that second reaction of the shortcut. So this is the situation where we're going to have to write it out and focus on canceling out what doesn't belong in the final reaction. So let's, re let's write the first reaction. We flip it, it becomes C2H6. I'm just going to skip the state to save time, becoming C2H2 plus 2H2. And since we flipped the reaction, the sign changes, so it becomes 94.5 kilojoules now. Then writing the third reaction out, um, we fl flipping that, you get 2CO2 plus 3H2O forms C2H6 plus 7 over 2O2. And then delta H for that was 283 kilojoules. We have to figure out what to do with the last reaction. So let's pick out something that shouldn't, that doesn't belong in the final reaction, and that is going to be the 2H2. Uh, you can see that 2H2 is not in the final reaction, so we have to get rid of it. And the way to get rid of that is we have to have 2H2 on the reactant side, so we can cross it out. So the goal is to put 2H2 on the reactant side, 
we can we can focus on the H2 in the second reaction. And we currently have two H2. We don't, we currently have an H2 on the product side. So I'm going to have to put that first flip the reaction and put the H2 on the reactant side. But I'm also going to have to multiply our reaction by two. So we get two H2, and then two times one half O2 is just O2, and that'll be two times H2O. So we get two H2O, and then the delta H. So what we did here is we flipped it, and we multiplied by two. So it's going to be negative 71.2 multiplied by 2, which is negative 142.4. And then let's start canceling our species. So the 2H2 will cancel out. The C2H6 cancels out. Uh, two of these H2Os cancel out. So then we'll have one H2O left over here. And you can take subtracting two from both sides. And then lastly, we have one O2 and then three and a half O2. So subtract one O2 from both sides and it'll make it five O2 because seven minus two is five. Then bring up, I don't think we anything else cancels out. So we'll bring what's left over down two Cl2 plus H2O forms C2H2 plus 5 over 2, O2. And then we'll add the delta H together. 94.5 plus 283 minus 142.4. And then that gives you 235.1 kilojoules. And that matches up with the answer. So just to recap, always approach Hess's law with the shortcut. Look at the, the final reaction, pick out a species, that only appears in one of the given reactions, and then see if you can figure out what to do with each of the reactions. If you can, then you can just use a shortcut and you don't have to write out everything like I did here. But if you can't figure out what to do with each of the reaction, then write out what you can, what uh, write out the reaction and then focus on canceling out what shouldn't be in the final reaction. So for example, H2 doesn't appear in the final reaction, so we have to cancel it out, and so that's, we put an equal amount on the opposite side. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.